In this video, we will share ways to use the moving average indicator to generate accurate trade signals. And it involves using two moving averages in a one hour time frame. It's very simple, easy to build and apply on your accounts without coding, and has an incredibly high profit factor if you use it correctly. Well enough talk, let's get straight to it. What exactly is a moving average? Well, it's a simple yet indispensable tool in the world of trading. Imagine this. It calculates the average closing price of an asset over a specific time frame, such as 20 periods. In other words, it sums up the closing prices of the last 20 candles and divides them by 20. But why does this matter? Think of it as a filter for market noise. By smoothing out price fluctuations, a moving average unveils the true trend beneath the surface. Now, here's the interesting part. Different moving averages serve different purposes. Want to grasp the big picture, the long-term trend? That's where the 200 period moving average comes into play. Need insights into short-term movements? Look no further than the 20 period moving average. And those numbers, 20, 50, 100, and 200, they're not arbitrary. They represent some of the most widely used moving averages, each offering its unique perspective on market behavior. At its core, a moving average serves as a compass in the tumultuous seas of market trends, simplifying the complex dance of price action. However, let's venture beyond the surface and explore the applications of the moving average that empower us to make better trading decisions. The moving average serves three primary functions. Firstly, it helps identify the trend of an asset. Secondly, it assists in detecting shifts in the prevailing trend. And thirdly, it aids in pinpointing areas of support and resistance on the price chart. Identifying the trend. The moving average is a pivotal tool for trend identification. Its core function is to assist in determining the direction of price movements. We employ three techniques to achieve this. Price versus moving average. By comparing the location of the price to the moving average, we discern the prevailing trend. When the price consistently resides above the moving average, signaling an uptrend, we seek buying opportunities. Conversely, if the price remains below the moving average for an extended period, indicating a downtrend, we consider selling opportunities. In sideways or range-bound markets, where the price oscillates around the moving average, it's prudent to await a clear trend. Enhancing our analysis, employing two moving averages with distinct period settings, offers a comprehensive view of both short-term and long-term price dynamics. Consider this straightforward example. In this chart, we observe two moving averages, a 20-period moving average, represented by the yellow line, and a 200-period MA, denoted by the blue line. The 20-period MA, being short-term, reflects the immediate trend, while the 200-period MA, serving as a long-term indicator, captures the overarching trend. Let's momentarily disregard the 200-period MA and solely focus on the 20-period MA. During certain intervals, the price consistently surpassed the 20-period MA, signaling an uptrend and prompting us to seek buying opportunities. Conversely, when the price dipped below the 20-period MA, it indicated a downtrend. However, note the limited price movement during these downtrends. Upon reintroducing the 200-period MA, we noticed the price remained above it throughout, suggesting a sustained long-term uptrend. Armed with this additional insight, trading against the long-term trend during these periods would have been perilous. In such circumstances, traders face a decision, abstain from trading due to the lateral movement or consider buying trades near the lower end of the range. However, initiating sell trades at the upper end of the range would contradict the prevailing long-term uptrend. Employing two moving averages doesn't necessarily yield superior trades. Rather, it aids in sidestepping unfavorable trades altogether. The slope of the moving average also gives us a good hint about the strength of the trend. In an uptrend, the moving average is sloped upwards. In a strong uptrend, the slope of the moving average will be steep and close to a 45-degree angle, while in a weak uptrend, we see a gentle upward slope. The same thing applies to downtrends. In a strong downtrend, we see a steep downward slope with approximately a 45-degree angle, while in a weak downtrend, we have a gentle downward slope. This information is helpful because if the trends are strong, we can be more aggressive in our entries. But if the trend is weak, we must be more careful with our trades. Large versus small moving average. Another way to identify the trend of the market is by using two moving averages and looking at their positions. When the smaller MA is above the larger MA, the price is considered to be in an uptrend, and in an uptrend, we look for buying opportunities. On the other hand, when the smaller MA is below the larger MA, we consider the price to be in a downtrend. And as logical traders, we need to look for selling opportunities 
in these times. So, these were the three techniques that can be used to identify the trend using the moving average indicator. Now let's learn how to use the moving average to identify reversals. To identify a trend reversal, we employ two primary techniques, price crossover. As previously discussed, in an uptrend, the price typically remains above the moving average, while in a downtrend, it stays below. Following this logic, when the price crosses the moving average from above, it signals the end of the uptrend and the onset of a downtrend, indicating a bearish reversal. Conversely, when the price crosses above the moving average from below, it suggests the conclusion of the downtrend and the emergence of a new uptrend, marking a bullish reversal. It's essential to note that not all crossovers are reliable signals, and many may lead to false alarms. Moving Average Crossover This approach involves utilizing two moving averages with distinct period settings, such as the 50 period and 200 period moving averages. Building on our earlier understanding, when the smaller moving average crosses below the larger one, it signifies a transition from an uptrend to a downtrend, indicating a bearish reversal. Conversely, when the smaller moving average crosses above the larger one, it denotes a shift from a downtrend to an uptrend, signaling a bullish reversal. While we don't recommend placing trades solely based on these reversals, they can be used in conjunction with other factors to enhance trade decisions. With these techniques for identifying reversals covered, let's now delve into one of the most critical applications of the moving average, identifying dynamic support and resistance levels. When discussing support and resistance, we typically refer to fixed price levels where reversals are anticipated. However, moving averages can serve as dynamic levels of support and resistance. In an uptrend, the price tends to remain above the moving average. When the price retraces to the moving average, it often finds support, presenting buying opportunities near the moving average. In the example provided, the moving average offers support to the price on three separate occasions. Conversely, in a downtrend, the price usually remains below the moving average. When the price approaches the moving average, it encounters resistance, suggesting selling opportunities near the moving average. In the example, the price encounters resistance five times. This illustrates how the moving average can function as a dynamic level of support and resistance for the price. Since we have covered the moving average's basics, now let me show you a good trading strategy for Bitcoin on a one-hour time frame using simple moving averages. To do that, we need to change moving average settings a bit. Make sure that you have two moving averages on the chart and set the length of the first one to 20. We are going to call it the fast line and set the length of another moving average to 40. We are going to call this one the slow line. So basically, when the fast line crosses above the slow line, we get a buy signal. And when it crosses below, we get a sell signal. Easy enough, right? But check this out. While the market is ranging or making sideways, we get a lot of false signals, which can lead us to the losing trades. We want to avoid that and filter out some noise by using relative strength index. If you haven't used RSI before, it's a great momentum indicator to tell you if a certain security is being overbought or oversold. So basically, if the line is above the 70 value, it's being overbought. If the line is below the 30 value, it's being oversold. And when RSI value is above 50, it means the price has got good upward momentum. And when it's below 50, it means price has bearish momentum. Now that we have RSI basics covered, let's add the RSI to the chart. To do this, simply go to your indicators tab, type in RSI, and then click this one that says relative strength index. Once it is added to the chart, we want to modify the settings a bit. Go to RSI settings and click on style tab. Here, modify the upper band value to 53 and your lower band value to 47. So here's the refined process. When we witness a fast line cross above the slow line, indicating a potential change in direction, we don't jump in blindly. Instead, we bring in the RSI to confirm the momentum and filter out potential false signals. By ensuring that the fast line is above the slow line, we substantially increase the likelihood of trading in the direction of the dominant trend. This step aims to align our entries with the broader market sentiment. Now, let's talk about the RSI component. As the moving averages suggests a potential buy signa, we introduce the RSI as an additional layer of confirmation and risk management. The RSI, with our threshold of 47 and 53, helps us gauge the market's momentum. By setting our RSI threshold above 47, we're being cautious, ensuring that we avoid entering long positions when the market is potentially lacking momentum. And for selling conditions, we make sure that the price is not dipping and we sell only after the price is raised above our entry point. Therefore, these conditions, 
Moving average crossover, RSI signaling good momentum, serves as our signal for entering a long position. These specific criteria act as a comprehensive filter, merging momentum, trend confirmation, and risk management into a cohesive strategy. Now what's making this strategy extremely good is also making it hard to follow. You see that tracking moving averages is not quite hard, but tracking RSI in these tight boundaries is a complex task. But don't worry, we have a solution. Let me introduce you to Vistinda, your strategy builder and trading automation tool that helps you to build and use custom strategies with just simple drag and drop tools. So let's craft this strategy in our strategy builder and see how easy it is to implement in your trading. First of all, I've created a new strategy. Now I'm going to enter a strategy name. I'm going to use automated MA with a high profit name for this one. Now let's set up our buy conditions. We want to buy when the fast MA line crosses above slow MA. To do that, we need to find cross in the indicators list, then drag and drop it to the entry conditions. Here, we want to set up our conditions for the cross. For crossing under, we set our slow line. To do that, we find a simple moving average and then we click on it. Now move to the SMA tab and change the value to 40. Next, let's add a fast line to the equation. To do that, find in a simple moving average, crossing upper, and move to another SMA tab and set the value to 20. Now we want to add the AND operator and look for the relative strength index in the indicators list and make sure to set time interval to one hour. Then we need to set our threshold. To do so, you need to look for the bigger than operator and then find and drop the number operator and set it number to 47. So now, whenever fast moving average 20 is breaking out from slow moving average 40, we get a buy signal. But with added RSI, it is acting like a filter, executing entries only when RSI is greater than 47. Now, once our entry conditions are set, let's move to sell conditions. We want to exit when the slow MA line crosses below fast MA line. To do that, we need to find cross in the indicators list again, then drag and drop it to the exit conditions. Now we will set up our conditions for the cross. We want to set our fast line in crossing under conditions. To do that, we need to find a simple moving average in the list, and then we click on it. Now move to the SMA tab and change the its value to 20. Get back to cross tab, and let's add a slow line to the equation. To do that, find in a simple moving average in crossing upper conditions. After that, we move to another SMA tab and set its value to 40. Therefore, we need to add the AND operator and look for the relative strength index in the indicators list. Drop it to the conditions. Now we are going to modify it and make sure to set time interval to one hour. Now on to setting our threshold. To do this, we drop the bigger than operator and then find and drop the number operator and set it number to 53. So now, Whenever fast-moving average 20 is crossing down slow-moving average 40, we get a sell signal, and with added RSI, it is filtering exit conditions to sell only when RSI is greater than 53. Now, let's put our strategy to the test on Bitcoin. Click on the Backtest button, select Crypto, and locate Bitcoin in the list. Choose a one-year period for backtesting. Once completed, we can review the results. What's truly remarkable about this strategy is its ability to yield over a 125% return on investment with a respectable win rate of 64%. Take note of the profit factor, which stands at a little over six, indicating a low risk profile when applied to Bitcoin. Now let's delve deeper into the results. To do that, click on see full results. Here, we can see the chart with our entries and exits. To put it in perspective, let's add two moving averages and RSI. To do that, click the indicators tab and type in moving average, add two of them to the chart. Do the same for RSI now, I'm going to change the length of our fast and slow moving averages to 20 and 40 respectively and change RSI bands to 53 and 47. Now we can exactly pinpoint our entry and exit points. Let me explain again how it works. So at first, when the fast line crosses the slow line, we get an entry. But then with adding the RSI indicator, it even gets more precise, allowing us to enter only when price is having good momentum and avoid entering zones with sideways price action. Ultimately, exiting when fast line is crossing down the slow line and RSI is bigger 53 allows us to capture a big moves, especially during trending market phases. And that concludes today's video. We've delved into the fundamentals of the moving average indicator and constructed a simple yet powerful trading strategy. For those keen on automating their trading, make sure to check out the links provided in the description box below. If you found this video helpful, don't hesitate to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more insightful content. Thank you for watching. See you guys in our next video.